you see wealth everywhere. Um, there are modern slaves there because they import their workers also to build. Uh, I know you guys have heard about the Alberge Hotel. The, the one that, that's shaped like a big sailboat? Yes. Have you heard about that? That's in the Arab Emirates. That's in Dubai. The Arab Emirates, there's seven different Emirates. And Dubai is one of and Abu Dhabi. There are two cities that they compete with each other to try and outdo each other. And so you go to Abu Dhabi, and the lady who worked for us, and we always try to have somebody, whenever we live in different countries, we always try to have people from the local um, economy work with us. Because then we... We know that we pay them a good salary, and depending on where we are, we pay for their children to go to school. And the woman who was working for us in Abu Dhabi, she's a Sri Lankan woman. Now, her family was all back in Sri Lanka, and she would send money back. Um, she put her two kids through school, and she was um, paying off her house. And she was older, so she was looking forward to being able to retire because she had lived this life for 20 plus years, only getting to see her family, her own kids, you know, every couple of years. Um, but that was the year of the tsunami. Do you remember the, big, the first really big tsunami? She lost one niece, and her family lost the house. Everybody in her family lost their homes, their businesses. They lost everything. So. Um, and I distinctly remember she was at our house working that day and we happened to see on the news um, about the tsunami and then it cut to talking about Sri Lanka and it was showing scenes of all the devastation in Sri Lanka and all of a sudden she just stopped what she was doing and she almost kind of fell over because that's when she found out that there was a good chance her family was gone. Um, you know, you feel real bad for it. How can, how can you help? Um, so what her family did then, uh, we gave her some money to send to her family. They were still alive, and they had a motorbike still. And they still had kind of, it wasn't really a wagon, but something that they could hook to the motorbike. And they could go to another town, to the grocery store that was still standing there, buy groceries and bring them back for the people then that were left in their village. And that's how they were going to restart their business. But what were they missing to keep them from doing this, do you think? Money. What would they need money for? Shelter. How are they going to get to that grocery store? Gas. gas. They need gas. They need gas money. How frustrating is that? You can see down the road that there's food, water, milk, everything that you need because you're starving. You have a way to get there, but no gas. So that's what we sent them money. Gas. We sent gas money. Mm -hmm. And we kept that going until they were able then to start getting enough money from the profits of what they were selling, everybody else in the building. And they weren't trying to rip off their neighbors or anything like that, but until they got enough money to be self-sufficient. 